Hey, what's up everybody? Two Tall Toby here. And one of my favorite things about the Two Tall Toby community is the Two Tall Toby Discord because we get into all kinds of good, fun conversations in there. And we also regularly get requests from people. Like earlier tonight, we saw Lil Jess in the chat said, hi all. I'm kind of new here. I'm kind of new to 3D CAD, new to on shape, new to modeling, and I'm really struggling with this 25-01-04 model. I'm not even sure where to get started. Can someone point me in the right direction? And the answer is absolutely. I would be happy to put together a tutorial for that challenge. So let's head over to twotalltoby.com, and here we can say get started with free practice models. And this takes us into a repository of over 130 2D to 3D challenges where you are challenged to take a 2D drawing and turn it into a 3D model to assign the correct material properties and then to calculate the mass of that 3D model. Now there's about 20 challenges in here that are free for anyone. And then if you really like the app, you can upgrade to the premium membership and unlock the entire library. Well, one of those challenges that is free for everyone is this one here, 250104. So I'm gonna say click here to practice. And then here we can see that 95 people have completed this model so far successfully. So let's see if we can become number 96. So we're gonna go down to the bottom here, click here to begin and go. What is the mass of this part in XXXX grams? We're gonna to try to calculate that mass and we're gonna enter that mass down here. So we can see down here in the title block that this part is made from ABS using a density of 1020 kilograms per cubic meter. And we can see here that this is a tier two challenge. So kind of on the easier side of our challenges, but a great place to get started when you are just getting into the world of 3D CAD. So even though we're running against the timer here, I always think it's a good idea to start out with kind of a game plan of how you're gonna put this model together. And anytime you're doing 3D modeling, the very first thing you wanna ask yourself is where will the origin be on my actual 3D model. And to help answer that question, you wanna look for things like, does the model have symmetry? This line here, center line SYM, center line SYM. That means the model is the same on this side and on this side of the center line. And it means the model is the same on this side and this side of the center line. So when you've got symmetry in two directions, the origin is almost always at the intersection of that symmetry. So that means that our model is gonna kind of start here at the middle and then it's gonna radiate outward and then if we look at this model here from the front view we could you know decide on the origin once again being along this line of symmetry just like in the top view and maybe we would decide to put the origin here on the flat on the bottom kind of where that part sets upon a table or upon another part in the assembly so our origin will be here in the front view and our origin will be here in the top view now, once you determine where the origin is, you then need to start asking yourself, what is my very first sketch going to look like? And in the case of this model here, I think it makes sense for our first sketch to look something like this 2D profile of this extrusion. So we could create a shape that looks something like that. We could extrude it in this direction and extrude it in that direction. And that's gonna give us the majority of this model. The question is, what is that very first sketch gonna look like? Is it just gonna be a line, a line, an arc, a line, and a line? Or is it gonna be a little bit more detailed than that? Is it gonna include these radii here in the corner? Is it gonna include the material thickness here, which is called out at 10 millimeters of wall thickness? And to answer that question, you really have to ask yourself how comfortable you are in 3D CAD, how comfortable you are in sketching, because the more complex your sketches get, the more difficult they're gonna be to manage and the more difficult they're gonna be to troubleshoot. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of split the difference. I think I'm gonna create the wall thickness in this first sketch, but I'm not gonna include those corner radii. So these corners here are gonna be sharp. I'm gonna create a shape like this. It's going to be nice and sharp. And then what I'll do is I'll go back in in a secondary feature and I'll add these radii five and I'll go back in in a third feature and I'll add these radii 15. And then I'll go back in in a fourth feature and I'll add these radii here in the corners, these radii 20. And then I'll go back in in a fifth and final feature and I'll add in this whole pattern here, 280 by 175. And then these four holes here, these one, two, three, four holes. And we're gonna be doing this in on shape, but if you're using a different CAD package, it's okay. It should still pretty much be a similar workflow, especially when you're dealing with models that are like tier one, tier two, even some tier three models, it's gonna be a very similar workflow with just subtle differences. 
So, like I said, I know that we're working against the clock. I know that we took, in this case, we took actually three and a half minutes just to come up with a game plan. But hopefully that time is well spent. And now we kind of understand how to think through this 3D model. Now, let's move into Onshape and start turning it into an actual 3D model. So I'm going to move this over to my second screen here. I'm going to bring up my keyboard cam. I'm going to move this up so that we can see Onshape, kind of fill up the screen here with Onshape. And let's get into it with this challenge. And so we're going to start out by choosing to create a new document here in Onshape, new document. We'll call this 25-01-04-cover, and we'll say create public document. And now we are going to take a look at where our origin is. So in Onshape, this is our origin. This is our 0, 0, 0 of the model. And we're going to create a sketch here on the front plane. And that sketch is going to be a line that comes over, a line that comes up, an arc, a line that comes down, and a line that comes over. So let's go to the front plane. We're going to press S on our keyboard to bring up our shortcut toolbar. We're going to begin a new sketch here with this button, new sketch. And now we can see we're in sketch mode. We're going to press N, which is the normal to function. And then we're going to press S again, and we're going to launch the line command. So we're going to create a line here that starts out kind of over here in this area, comes over. We're going to single click. We're going to move our mouse up in this direction. We're going to single click. We're going to move our mouse away. We're going to come back to this, this uh, end point of that line. So I'm not clicking anything. I'm just moving my mouse over that end point. And then we're going to come up and over like so. We're going to single click. We're going to move down to here. We're going to single click and we're going to move over this way and we're going to single click. And then we can hit escape and now we're ready to start adding dimensions. Now, if your if your model is in inches and you're supposed to be working in millimeters, you have to remember to change this. I, I should have done this in the beginning. I missed it, but that's OK. So I can hit the green check mark here to get out of sketch mode. So now I'm no longer in sketch mode. You'll see if I want to get back into sketch mode, I double click here on the sketch double click on sketch one now i'm back in sketch mode click this little green check mark now i'm no longer in sketch mode and then i'm going to go up here to this hamburger menu and then i'm going to choose workspace units and this is where you could change if you were working in inches you could change this to millimeters if you were working in pounds you could change this to grams but this model is in mmgs so i'm in the correct units currently so let me get back into that sketch i'm going to double click on that sketch there we go. Now I'm back in sketch mode. And now I'm going to begin adding some dimensions to this sketch. So the dimensions I'm going to add are going to be a dimension here of, let's see here. This is going to be from this point to this point. It's going to be a dimension of three to eight, enter. And then from this point here, which is the origin to this point, it's going to be a dimension of three to eight slash two. So 328 over two, enter, and there we go. Now that's going half of that distance. Now there's other ways to do this, like we could make these two lines equal, that would help to center them. There's a, there's a lot of ways that you could do this. Um, so if you didn't wanna do it that way, you could hit escape. You could take this dimension here, just single click on it, and then press delete on your keyboard. So now you just have that 328. And then what you could do is you could take this point here, which is the origin, and this point here, which is the point of your, uh, of your arc, and then you could say V, press V on your keyboard. That makes those two vertical. And then you could take this line here and this line over here, and you could press E on your keyboard, and that makes those two lines equal. So that will also set you up so that this arc behaves in a way that it stays centered relative to the origin. Now, if this line over here is not behaving the same way as my line, it might be that you don't have a tangency relationship. So you'll see here, if I click on this arc, I've got this tangency relationship. If I delete that, then you'll notice that when I go to move this point, see it doesn't behave correctly there, kind of getting some odd results. So I'm gonna click on this arc, click on this line, and then press T. T is for tangent. And now you'll see that I get that, that behavior that we were hoping for. So now we can continue adding some dimensions. So S key, going to do another dimension here this dimension is going to go from this line to the center point of the arc i'm not going to click on the arc i'm going to click on the center point so dimension there up to that center point that dimension is going to be 52 and then the radius of this arc here is going to be a radius of 80 
And so once you add in that information, that sketch should be all black. We call that fully defined or fully constrained. So now that that sketch is all black and fully constrained, now what we can do is we can choose to take this geometry and offset all of this geometry. So currently, you'll notice up here that the dimension command is in blue. Well, if I press escape, then that command is no longer blue. So I'm no longer in the dimension command. And so now I'm going to choose this command here, offset offset and then i'm going to pick this line this line this arc this line and this line and then if i move over here to this arrow i can flip the direction of this arrow so flip that direction so that the offset is going in this direction kind of up up towards the model and then i'm going to left click in the background and when you left click in the background you get a final box where you can input what that wall thickness should be and in this case that wall thickness should be 10 millimeters so 10 enter and there we go, that finishes that offset command. So now all that's left to do is just, if we zoom in here on these ends, we gotta close these off with some lines. So S key, line, single click here, single click here. Okay, and then we'll, whoops, we'll move over here to this side, zoom in over here from this point down to this point. And then if we hit escape, that should be fully defined. Now, if you press shift one, shift in the number one that takes you back into a front view so shift one for your front view there it looks like these lines are still not black so i'm just going to grab this endpoint here and move it around and what do we see hmm that line's not staying vertical that line really needs to be vertical so how do we fix that we click on the line and then we press v on our keyboard now that line is vertical and so we're going to do the same thing over here so you notice if we take this point and we drag it a little bit that line's not vertical if you're ever not sure why uh, you know why a sketch is blue grab a blue point and just move it around a little bit move it around and then you can see we could click on this line here and press v and there we go now that line is vertical so now our sketch is completely black and that's always what we're hoping to accomplish when we're sketching we want the whole sketch to be black which is called fully constrained so now we can choose to extrude so you'll notice up here is the extrude command shift e or extrude and then if you roll the view a little bit you can see that you can type in an extrude depth here of 240 enter you can see what that looks like and then what you can do is you can say you want this to be symmetric because we really want our origin right at the middle. It's going to make it much easier for us to go in and add those holes later, since those holes are also part of a symmetric pattern. So we're going to make this 240. We're going to use this option here for symmetric so that the origin is right at the center of that part. And then we're going to hit the green check mark. And now we're going to get into our fillet command at the feature level. So you'll notice here we've got the fillet command. So we move this over here, fillet. And we're going to add in a fillet here and this fillet radius is going to be five millimeters five and then we'll choose this edge and we'll choose this edge over here and you can hit the green check mark and then you can choose the fillet command again and you can see that this time the radius is going to be 15 and it's going to be this edge here and this edge over here and you hit the green check mark and then you can see that we're going to do a fillet command here with a radius of 20 and it's going to be this edge, this edge. If you need to zoom in a little bit, that's fine. You can zoom in and zoom out. I'm just uh, pretty used to this. This edge here and this edge over here. We get all four of those edges. If you press Shift 7, that'll take you into isometric. So Shift 1 is front. Shift 2 is rear. Shift 3 is left side. Shift 4 is right side. Shift 5 is top. Shift 6 is bottom. And then Shift 7 is isometric. So those are really helpful if you start losing control of the model. So now we've got those fillets in there 20. We hit the green check mark. And now the final thing we're going to do is we're going to pick this face here. We're going to begin a new sketch. So S key and then choose to make a new sketch, which is a pencil here. N key to get normal too. And then you can go into your rectangle command. You'll notice up here, you've got your sketch rectangle. Well, one of the rectangle types here is center point rectangle, center point rectangle. If you choose that option, center point rectangle, you can single click here right on the origin. So left click one time, move your mouse, and then you can left click again and then let go of your mouse. And you can type in 280, enter, 175, enter. 
And look at that, you got a nice black rectangle sketch, a nice centered rectangle sketch. So it's really helpful when you center your models because there may be features downstream that are also symmetric and having those center planes makes it really easy to mirror or to create a center rectangle or whatever it is you're trying to do. So now this is the only thing that's a little bit tricky with this model. We're gonna exit this sketch. So exit this sketch. So you can see the rectangle here. We're still looking down from the top. You can see the rectangle. You can see these four points here. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose this button here, hole. And when we choose that button for hole, we're gonna say this is gonna be a simple hole and it's gonna have a diameter of 25. 25 for the diameter there of that hole. And then for the points, so up here you see it says sketch points to place holes. We're gonna pick those four points on the corners here of this rectangle. One, two, three, four points. And there we go. We hit the green check mark and on shape creates those holes. And we do what's called the final spin, which is where we just spin the model around and we, we make sure that it looks just like the drawing. If you want to really impress your customers, what you can do is you can come over here, right mouse button where it says part one, you can say edit appearance and you can change the color of this part. So it kind of matches the, the color that's on the print. You could go into mixer here and increase that to like a little bit more of a yellow. That looks pretty good. And then what you can do is you can come over here again to where it says part one down here in this list and you can right mouse button and say assign material. Now the material that we're gonna use here is gonna come from the TTT custom materials. So I'll include a link to a video, whoops, nope, up there, over there, uh, the link to the video on how to set up the TTT custom materials. But here you can see you can fly out this menu here and we're gonna choose ABS. And uh, then what we can do is we can hit the green check mark and we can come all the way down here to this lower right corner here you can see where we've got the option for mass properties. So we click mass properties and then we click on this part and 1226.1 grams. So I'm gonna come down here into this box to enter that value, 1226.1, enter. And yes, we did it. We got it correct. So congratulations, this answer is correct, 1226.1 grams. The elapsed time was 15 minutes, and when we click OK here, or submit, we're gonna get one point on the community scoreboard, so I'm gonna say submit, and look at that, 96 people have now completed this model. Now, after you complete one of these challenges in the Practice Models app, you can scroll down here, you can see that the average time for this model was nine minutes and 39 seconds. My time was 15 minutes, so a little bit longer than average. But you can also go back and you can click the Try Again button so that you can get even faster with your times, faster with your modeling. So we can see here that the top times were Fusion 360 and Shane from the US using Fusion 360, Bob from Texas using SolidWorks, and Rich Pen using Onshape. And then look at all these other Onshape users here. This is what we like to see. So very cool here. Look, we even got a plasticity user in here doing these models. That is awesome. So very cool here that we were able to get uh, those mo that model completed. We were able to become number 96 on this completionist board. And if you guys enjoyed that challenge, be sure to hit the like button. Be sure to let me know down in the comments if you learned anything or if you have any questions. And of course, be sure to visit tutaltoby.com where you can try out some of these practice models challenges, track your time, play against the clock and continue to get faster and faster going from 2D to 3D models. And I will look forward to seeing all of you in the next tutorial.